Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at FMA Allentown checking with 555 Monthly Robotics. You may have seen this team on the Open Alliance with their blog, and we're going to check out what 555 and everything has to bring here in Crescendo. 555 has a really packaged, well-packaged machine, and we just watched her auto doing multi-notes and looking great. So we'll be talking about some of their different auto modes and what they go through on their mechanical side and also what they're doing for sensing. So let's learn more about this team here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Max, let's start out uh, kind of going uh, bottom up on this robot. You're doing a, a flip swerve or inverted swerve as well. So let's talk about that as then we start to go through some of your note scoring journey as well. Yeah, so we, we very quickly realized um, that if we wanted to do under the bumper intake, we would really need a lot more space than our current swerve mo module configuration would allow. So we decided to invert the swerve modules. We um, ended up putting this top plate up above. We have our entire frame perimeter up higher. We also um, inverted our motors fully, flipped them completely upside down, which just allows us that extra two or three inches of space for the intake. Um, that has allowed us to have a much wider intake. We, we really have that touch it, own it type of style, um, which is really, really important for us all throughout the game. So uh, from a packaging wise, is there anything else that you had to consider from packaging considerations by either doing that type of swerve or that resulted in that type of swerve? Yeah, so we um, we really when tried to go really compact here. We had multiple um, sort of design challenges, especially with our shooter pivot um, here. We, ha we have sort of plate gear style pivot um, powered by a chain. We very quickly realized that um, these, uh, the angle motors that we used to move it up and down wouldn't have enough space to stick out. We put a 90 degree gearbox on those um, to make them slip, stick up, um, which has allowed us to fit those in. We also, um, in order to, in order to tension that chain properly, um, we mounted them on clamping bearing blocks, um, which is, uh, allows us to put them on this bottom bar down here and move them back and forth um, in order to tension the chain. And unfortunately, the, I mean, the design needs some tweaking. I, they do slip forward um, after heavy use, but it has really allowed us to minimize backlash and keep that chain nice and tight. Let's talk about that note journey. You mentioned a little bit about that under the bumper intake. So let's follow that note through talking about the under the bumper intake as we go into your shooter. Yeah, so we have, um, of course, under the bumper intake. This top section of our bumpers is slightly raised up, which just allows the note to travel under. Um, then we have our two rollers here, the preliminary roller and then our top roller and a bottom roller, which help funnel, um, compressing it slightly, funnel the note all the way up. We also, this was sort of last minute changes. We realized that this transfer between the side of the intake being here to the side of the note being here, we needed some sort of ramping system there. So we designed these systems of ramps and funnels that sort of help push the note in here and help minimize sticking, which so far in all of our matches, um, today, we have not had a note get stuck once in the intake. And can we see a note come in so we can see what that process yeah. looks like? So then let's talk about the uh, shooter. You got the uh, adjustable angle on that as well. So, uh, you know, it's been looking really good at the field. Your shots have been really accurate. So talk to me more about that process. Yeah, so we have um, our indexer here, uh, three rollers that help balance out um, our movement all throughout. So we always have good points of contact on the note. We then um, use the indexer to accelerate the note, of course, and have already speed, sped up our top shooter wheels. Um, we've actually sort of been um, running into issues this competition as our wheels are really too fast. Um, in testing, we thought we're running them at 4,000 RPM. In testing, that really worked well, but we've have, been having some um, accuracy issues, and they, they really just shoot really, really hard, which it works. It works really well, um, but it's definitely something to keep in mind for next competition. Something I want to ask you about is your wheel placement. Some teams we talk to are just going with like two wheels on one side to try to get some spin. You're kind of going that uh, four wheels to get a very uh, hard shot, straight shot approach. Can you just talk to me about uh, why that was the best solution for your team? Yes. Yeah, so in in prototyping, um, we actually first started with sort of a kitbot style side um, intake wheel design. 
we very quickly realized um, that that wasn't actually ideal. If you compress the note sideways, it sort of flings out once it shoots, and then that can mess it up further down the road. Um, so what we did is we fully pivoted into a up and down horizontal style shooter, um, which just allows us great contact um, on the notes. We have our wheels are perfectly um, aligned with the edges of the note for proper contact. Um, we have one and a half inches between these blue compliant wheels, which in testing seem to be the best value um, for that as the, the wheels the wheels definitely grip a little bit and the note can compress through that. Um, we also have slight amount, just a half inch of sideways compression, which we have realized that um, helps keep the note sort of slightly longer points of contact as the sides are slightly longer and straighter which then works on these wheels to fully funnel it out. Well, before we talk about your amp shot here, one of the things that we'd love to do is our friends at Suncut Senna give us a uh, $50 gift certificate to give you for some cool custom laser fab on your robot. So you go to suncutsun.com slash fun, where you get an extra 20% off and that $50 gift certificate. So we can't wait to see what creation you come up with that. Tell me more about your uh, amp shot and what you're doing for that. Yeah, so for amp, uh, we, we sort of just do sort of a pop it in style shot. Um, we raise our, um, our shooter up to, I believe it is 65 or so degrees, um, and then we shoot it, it pops in, and it falls back down. Which, I mean, of course, the amp isn't here, but that, that would have would have made it in. Danica, let's start talking about uh, auto modes and what you're doing uh, for your team there. Uh, we were talking earlier that you have thousands of different auto possibilities, so I'd love to hear more about that. And we're going to take a look at your driver station screen too, so talk to me more about that uh, and run through what you're doing. So our auto is completely configurable. We labeled each of these points 1, 2, 3, A, B, C through H, and then our drivers before each match can input any combination of points. 1A2, for example, and it will create any path. Um, with all of these combinations, we can have more than 100,000 possible combinations of points that we can run at any point to make us more flexible for any alliance we could be on. When you're looking uh, from autonomous modes, uh, so right now, as I mentioned, we saw you uh, getting three, four notes in auto and stuff like that. Do you think that strategy might change in regards to which notes you go for in autonomous as this game starts to develop in the meta? Yeah, so, so far we've been going for the closer notes to the speaker because most of our partners have not had consistent autos. As other teams begin to progress, we may change our auto to go for these further notes. We already have those paths made and they should be good to go. Uh, and talking about uh, the actual dashboard, the smart dashboard they're using as well too, like from a customization wise, um, any like advice to teams who are looking at doing something like this and how they can create their own? Um, I think that one of our biggest things was using Path Planner to create our path segments. So we can have a path from say one to A, except, and then we can chain it on with other paths to create a longer sequence that's completely, cu completely customizable. Well, shout, shout out to 3015 for Path Planner as well, too. Lots yes, of cool stuff. yes, thank you, 3015. Uh, with that as well. As we start to wrap up on this robot, uh, let's talk about vision uh, on your robot as well, too. And uh, Abraham, I, I know you got a couple of line lights, but we also have the strategic placement of the googly eyes to so talk to me about that vision, and then let's go into your limelight as well. Of course. So the, uh, the, googly, the googly eyes um, allow the robot itself to see the notes, so it gets excited. Um, um, so then our, we also have two limelights, one that's aiming down in our intake that lets the driver line up to notes, and we're also using it during auto. So one of the advantages of doing path planner like that is that you can actually schedule your own commands in between paths that require the drivetrain. So if we have not picked up a note by the time a path ends, we'll actually align to it and keep chasing it, um, which should hopefully make it a lot more reliable. And the other thing, so we're also using the one on the front for something that we've dubbed um, scoring mode. So what that does is whenever the driver is ready to score, it'll target the April tag on the speaker and um, it'll actually um, uh, lock on the heading of the swerve drive to the uh, April tag. So as the driver translates around, they can hopefully dodge defense spots while still staying lined up. And then when it'll also angle our arm as they move around in real time and ramp up the shooter. So whenever they're ready to shoot, the operator just presses the uh, shoot button that spins up the indexer and it goes right in. And um, we did that using, like I said, the limelight, um, a, a little bit of a trigonometry to get our distance. And then we just took some data and ran a curve fit to get the angle at a certain distance that we should be shooting at. Um, we just wanted to show off our um, score mode command. So we're gonna run that right now. So as you can see, it'll follow, if you move the robot, it should also, um, if you hold the April tag still and move the robot, it'll also um, follow that. 
You can see the uh, arm is readjusting and the heading stays constant. The only button the driver is touching is the um, translate stick and the holding down the score button. Well, Montclair Robotics, congratulations on a great robot this year. We can't wait to see, of course, how you do here at Allentown, but throughout the rest of the season as well, there's a lot of cool things teams can learn from this. So I hope they get a chance to see this and good luck throughout the rest of the season in this competition. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.